Welcome to a strange and terrifying world inspired by the stories of H.P. Lovecraft, his literary circle, and the classic Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. In Call of Cthulhu, the card game, players take on the roles of intrepid investigators and unspeakable horrors, trying to accomplish dangerous missions while battling the forces of their opponents. Call of Cthulhu the Card Game is a two-player dueling game that can be played using only the contents of the core set. The Call of Cthulhu core set features 165 cards that can be used to assemble 21 different deck combinations right out of the box. The cards are divided among the seven factions of the Call of Cthulhu card game. The Agency, Miskatonic University, The Syndicate, Cthulhu, Pastor, Yog Sothoth, and Shub Nigarath. Any two of these factions can be combined to form a playable deck. In addition, Call of Cthulhu is also a living card game, and your enjoyment and experience of the game can be customized and enhanced through the addition of regularly released 40 card expansions called Asylum Packs. Each Asylum Pack provides you with new options and strategies for each deck in the core set, as well as cards you can use to build original decks of your own. There are five different card types in the Call of Cthulhu card game. Story cards create the field of play where the opposing forces will compete. Character cards represent the heroes, villains, investigators, and monsters of the Cthulhu mythos. Support cards represent items, weapons, and strategic locations that can be used by the characters to support their efforts. Event cards represent unexpected tactics, maneuvers, curses, arcane spells, and other shifts that can occur during play. And finally, conspiracy cards are similar to story cards, but they can be initiated by one of the players from his hand. The game board forms the center of the Call of Cthulhu card game play area. It holds the story cards that players will investigate and attempt to win throughout the game, the story deck, from which one story cards are replenished, and both a pool and success track for the Cthulhu success tokens. Players place success tokens on the success track, on their side of the game board as they succeed at the stories in the game. Wound tokens are placed on character cards to track wounds dealt to that character. Domains are used to play cards during the game, and the Cthulhu domain markers are used to mark when a domain has been used by a player. Placing a domain marker on a domain drains that domain, and it cannot be used again until it refreshes on the player's next turn. The focal point of the Call of Cthulhu card game is the story cards, which are drawn at random from a fixed story deck and placed on the game board between the players. During the game, players take turns playing character and support cards from their hands and use them to achieve success at these stories. While characters are committed to a story, they may face opposition in four different arenas – terror, combat, arcane, and investigation. Every turn as a story resolves, the active player may receive success tokens on his side of a story card. When a player has accumulated five success tokens on his side of a story card, he wins that story. A player that wins three stories immediately wins the game. Before playing the Call of Cthulhu Living card game, both players follow these quick steps in order. As with any deck of playing cards, each player shuffles the cards in his deck until they are sufficiently randomized. Next, the players place the game board in the center of the play area. They place all of the success and wound tokens in the deep area of the game board. One player shuffles the story deck and deals three story cards face up to the center of the game board. The remainder of the story cards are placed face down in the space designated for the story deck.
Each player takes three cards that are not being used in this game and places them face down next to his deck. These cards are the domains to which their controllers will attach resources. They should form a back row in each playing area. Each player now draws eight cards from his deck. This is his setup hand. He chooses five of these cards to be his opening hand. The remaining cards become his starting resources. Finally, each player takes the remaining three cards from his setup hand and attaches one face up and upside down to each of his three domains. The card bottom and resource icon should be all that is visible above the domain card. The attached cards are now considered resources. The Call of Cthulhu Living Card Game is played over a series of turns which are taken in this order. Refresh Phase Draw Phase Resource Phase Operations Phase and Story Phase Let's take a look at a sample game in progress and see what happens in each of these phases. In this example, Player 1, who's playing a multi-faction human deck using Agency, Miskatonic University and Syndicate characters has the following cards in play. An exhausted laboratory assistant, an exhausted strange librarian and an insane Paul Lamond. Player 2, who's playing a Cthulhu deck, has the following cards in play. An exhausted ocean crawlers, a Lord of the Silver Twilight and an adult deep one. Player 2 has just completed his story phase, and it's now Player 1's turn. First, Player 1 readies all of his exhausted cards in play and refreshes his drained domains. Then, he can choose one insane character and restore it to sanity. Note that the restored character remains exhausted this round. In the draw phase, player one draws two cards from his deck. If at any point a player has no cards remaining in his deck, he is immediately eliminated from the game and his opponent wins. During the resource phase, player one may choose a single card from his hand and attach it face up and upside down to one of his domains as a resource. A resource is no longer a part of a player's hand and cannot be used for anything else. A player does not have to attach a resource in this phase, but early in the game it's generally a good idea to do so, as building up resources allows a player to pay for more powerful cards and effects. The operations phase is the only phase when a player is allowed to play character and support cards from his hand. Only the active player, player 1 in this example, may play character and support cards during this phase. In order for a player to play a card from his hand or to activate certain card effects, he must pay for it by draining a domain with sufficient resources. The cost of the card is in the upper left-hand corner of the card. This is the minimum number of resources that must be attached to a domain to pay for that card. Also note that when draining a domain to play a non-neutral card, at least one of the attached resources must be of that card's faction. This is called making a resource match. Cthulhu figures are placed on the domains to indicate when they have been drained. In our example, player one drains a domain with three resources attached to play the hired muscle card from his hand. Notice that he could not play the Syndicate Liaison as this card belongs to the Syndicate faction and there are no Syndicate resources attached to this domain. Player one then drains one of his other domains and attaches the Choo Choo Talisman to the hired muscle.
The story phase is where most of the action in the Call of Cthulhu living card game takes place. During this phase, player one will commit his characters to stories in an effort to place success tokens on his side of those story cards, while player two will use his own characters to struggle against player one's forces in an attempt to foil the effort at the story cards. In order to commit a character to a story card, that character must exhaust itself. This means that already exhausted characters cannot commit to story cards. In this example, player one decides to commit all three of his readied characters to the Through the Gates story card. Paul Lamond cannot commit, as he is currently exhausted. Note that it's entirely up to player one how many characters he commits and where he commits them. Player 2 may now commit any number of his readied characters to any story where the active player has committed at least one character. He decides to exhaust both the adult Deep One and the Lord of the Silver Twilight and commit them to Through the Gates. Player 2 also plays the Event card, Touched by the Sleeper, choosing the adult Deep One as the target. Touched by the Sleeper reads, Action. Choose a Cthulhu character. Until the end of the phase, that character gains two Terra icons. The active player now selects one story at a time to be resolved. When resolving a story, the committed characters go through a series of struggles, and finally, the active player will determine if he has met success at that story. In this example, there is only one story that needs to be resolved. There are four struggles on a story card, resolved in this order. Terror, Combat, Arcane, and Investigation. To resolve a struggle, such as Terror, the active player counts the total number of the relevant icon on all his committed characters at that story. Then the opponent does the same for his characters that are committed to the story. The player who has the most icons of the relevant type wins that struggle and immediately exercises its specific effect. If the players tie when counting the number of icons, then nothing happens and the game proceeds to the next step. The player who loses a terror struggle must immediately choose one of his characters to go insane, if able. That character is no longer committed to the story and is considered to have fled the scene, gibbering and drooling. An insane character is placed face down and exhausted in its controller's play area. Player 1 counts two Terra Icons and Player 2 counts three Terra Icons. Player 2 wins the Terra struggle and the strange librarian is immediately chosen by Player 1 to go insane. The player who loses a combat struggle must immediately choose one of his characters committed to that story to take a wound, if able. Most characters are destroyed after taking a single wound, but some are able to withstand more damage if their character has a toughness keyword. A character like the Hired Muscle, with toughness plus one, will be destroyed only after receiving its second wound. Player 1 counts three combat icons and player 2 counts two combat icons. Player 1 has won the combat struggle and player 2 chooses the Lord of the Silver Twilight to take a wound. This destroys the Lord of the Silver Twilight, who is then placed in his owner's discard pile. The player who wins an arcane struggle may immediately ready one of his characters committed to that story. The character is still considered to be committed to that story, but is no longer exhausted. Player 1 counts zero arcane icons, and Player 2 counts one arcane icon. Player 2 has won the arcane struggle, and readies the adult Deep One. The winner of an investigation struggle may immediately place a success token on the story card currently being resolved. Player 1 counts one investigation icon and player 2 counts zero. 
Player one has won the investigation struggle and places a success token on Through the Gates. After the four struggles, player one determines if he's been successful at the story. He does this by adding the combined skill values of all his characters currently committed to the story. This number is the total skill. If the total skill value of the active player exceeds the total skill value of his opponent, then the active player may place a success token on his side of the story being resolved. In addition, in order to be successful at a story, the active player's total skill must always be at least one or higher. If his total skill is zero or less, he does not succeed at the story. If the active player succeeds at the story and the total skill of his opponent was zero or less, the story is considered unchallenged and the active player may place an additional success token on the story card. Player 1 counts a total of 4 skill at Through the Gates, and Player 2 counts a total of 1 skill. Player 1 has succeeded at the story, and places a success token on his side of the card. This is his fifth success token at Through the Gates, so Player 1 has won the story. Immediately after a player has won a story, that player takes the story card, chooses whether or not to execute its effect, and then places it prominently in his game area, face up, to indicate that he has won the card. This occurs before resolution of the next story card begins. The first player to win three story cards wins the game. Player one wins through the gates and chooses not to execute its effect. After a story card is won, a new story is drawn from the story deck and put into play. At the end of the story phase, players have one more chance to take actions, such as playing event cards or using card abilities in play, and then all characters are uncommitted from their story cards, retaining their current state of readiness or exhaustion. They are no longer committed to those stories and may commit to different story cards in the future, when and if they are able. Play now passes to player 2, who begins his turn with his refresh phase. The game continues in this fashion until someone wins three story cards. This concludes our overview of Call of Cthulhu, the living card game. For more information on updates, rules clarifications, community message boards, and organized play, visit www.cthulhulcg.com.